one of the latest additions to the Supercar Advocates collection is the beloved Ferrari F12 TDF. Very rare in number. Only 799 examples made in the world. And this car here, Rosso Monza, the name of the color, the paint, it's a $68,000 option. It's the only one in the world known to be painted in this color and to have the whole spec that this car has. But we'll get to that later. For now, I'm just gawking, I'm gobsmacked. The car just arrived and it is insane. It is brutal. It's a V12, 780 horsepower, zero to 100 in only 2.9 seconds. It's fast. And that towel end kicks out. You've got to straighten it up. Oh, it's simply irresistible. It is what a Ferrari should always be, a front engine V12. So it's got design cues from Ferraris of the past. We could say 250 GTO, 275 GTB4, and a 288 GTO. So I'll get to that. But to begin, we've got side canyons here that are in carbon fiber. So the whole front bumper is carbon fiber. This car has a lot of carbon, even here, the side air ducts, it's got carbon on the side sills and the side skirts down here. The wheels are simply big. Everything about it, the brakes, the ceramic brake discs, you just hit the brakes and it just stops. The way it roars, stock standard, it's got a massive V12 sound. One that will leave your ears craving for days. Believe me, I just picked up the SF90 not long ago and I've dumped that in the corner and I'm out here cruising and driving in this car because of that V12 naturally aspirated power. It's not as powerful. The other car is a thousand horsepower. This has 220 horsepower less. But let me say one thing. It is a stunning looking car. It's fat, it's wide. So let's now get to these design cues that I just spoke about. The whole car, the whole shape of it, resembles one of a 275 and 250 GTO. Over here, we've got these side louvers and we could say outlets. These are a nod to the Ferrari 288 GTO, the rare, the first of the breed hypercar. And on the other side, we've got the fuel cap. That fuel cap is a nod to the 275 GTB4. Right here at the back, we've got carbon fiber running right across, which looks pretty good. So it connects these tail lights. So don't forget, this is the final model that features the single tail light at the rear. That connects them right through with a carbon fiber rear diffuser and quad exhausts in titanium finish in this spec here. The color, just check that out for a moment. I can't stop. I really love this car. One great aspect with having a Ferrari V12, you've got boot space in the back and there's plenty of it. Or I could say ample space at the back. To further reduce the weight, Ferrari has given us lightweight glass all around the car and the flattened the side glass here compared to the Ferrari F12. The standard F12 model is more angular. This is now flatter and we've got a little scoop here that covers the aerodynamics. It's got 20 inch wheels front and back wrapped with Pirelli P0 Corsa tires. Great track tires, but they're not Trophy RRs. What this has is 275 wide front tires. Yep, you heard that correctly. That is as wide as most supercars use in their rears. This at the back has 315 even wider again, and it's got all wheel steering. Imagine that, a car this big, it needs to be agile. It's quite long, look at that nose. It's a long nose. So weight distribution, 54% at the back. So it's not a 50-50 ride and it's quick, it's heavy but it's still 110 kilograms lighter than the F12. And now over to the interior, it looks so lush. We've got carbon fiber backed race seats wrapped with leather on the outer sides and on the inners, they're all Alcantara. Alcantara on the lower dash, Alcantara on the upper dash, leather steering wheel with matte carbon fiber right throughout the cabin and Alcantara roof lining. Don't forget, that material saves a lot of weight, helps reduce this car's overall weight, but 
it's track and race inspired and still feels so luxurious to sit in. It's still a Ferrari. You've also got navigation, radio, hi-fi options that are optional on this car. Simply is an irresistible Ferrari at that. Today, prices range at over $2 million Australian. That's correct. They're not a cheap car, but they're well worth it. Only $799 made, what more could you want? Now, enough of the talk, enough of the introduction. It's time to take this car for a spin. And you can see this grin on my face. I'm just too excited. Okay, the TDF, oh my God, I've got to say, is one of the most exciting, one of the most brutal Ferraris I've ever, ever, ever driven. The rear end, it's so twitchy, you can just feel it. It's in race mode and the thump, every time you change a key, it just thumps you in this race mode. You've got a button here for bumpy road, you press it and then it's, softens the suspension so you the bumps but the car is so low you actually feel that you need to put the suspension up all the time you've got that height you can adjust press the button i can't even speak about how crazy and insane this sound is in the cabin and on the outside of the car it's just such a brute force i'm so excited here I always disregarded these models here, the V12s. So I thought they were more like a GT car, older man style of Ferrari. I like the small, slick race cars, SF90, Pista, 458 Speciale. But now this has changed the way I perceive these cars. It's actually like, yeah, it's a GT car, so it's a lot bigger. But at the same time, it's comfortable. It's very fast. It sounds absolutely insane. It's absurd. It's a V12 front mounted engine. It's the weight, you can feel it. So the rear end does twitch a lot. It does go sideways a lot. You've got to correct it, especially if you turn traction control off. But it's, there's just so much positive news about this car. I really like it a lot. It's a lot better than what I thought it would be. Especially the way people look at it. It must be the color that Rosso Monza or it could possibly be because it's a V12 Ferrari. It's so long and so loud. The sound just echoes off the buildings. It fellows. It's insane right now. And you wouldn't want to drive it in any other mode than race mode itself. In sport mode, that's sport mode now. So it's a bit more, it's still crazy. But the gear shifts are slower. I can feel that. It doesn't give me that big thump that the race mode was giving me. Then you've got wet mode, obviously if the, you know, more traction. Or you can go CT, CT off, but that's a bit crazy. Let's just leave it in race mode. It's just, oh, the rear wheels, the tires were just spinning. You put your foot down, all that torque, the 780 horsepower, just sends those tires spinning. It's just, it's a different beast altogether. This is a different beast. This is a different sort of animal, one that I'm not kind of used to. I don't think many people are used to animals like this. 
the cabin is just it's spacious a guy like me six foot one 250 pounds i've got ample head space here enough room my shoulders are fine in these seats although these are the extra large size option it's got air conditioning the dash looks amazing the cluster's perfect there does have too much that you don't need it's actually got everything that you need in a car like this so they don't carry over things that you're not going to use it's definitely a race car so let's put it that way this is an actual race car and you know it's wow wow there's if i just tell you it is very different so you got 54 percent weight distribution to the rear but it still kicks out a lot the front end seems quite light as well it doesn't feel as heavy as you think it is it looks like a two-ton car but it's not it weighs like less than 1500 kilograms or something it's just yeah it's another bundle of joy it's something else and I keep saying that, I don't know how many more times I could say it, but it's worth saying and worth repeating how good this car actually is. One thing it doesn't fare good in is humps. You've got to take them at sharp angles or you've got to put the front nose lifter up all the time. So it's not a car they can really drive as a daily. It's very abrupt. It's very rude, you could say. It's not quite easy but it's easy to access to get in and out of it's easy to sit in i've got the navigation i've got everything else that you'd use in any other everyday car without the extra you know added goodies and no touch screen anywhere because you don't need those in a car like this it's a ferrari for god's sake but it just feels so beefy so solid in a way but solid as in a car the way it moves and whatever but it's so twitchy which is so scary so if I take it back to that, it's scary. It actually is a scary car to drive. 